it's nice right now that even though it's uh, it's COVID time, we are on lockdown time, but the the work of the Lord still continues to go on. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. So so this evening, I'd like to share with you uh, the ministry that really somehow saved my life. I'll I'll put it this way. This ministry really saved my life. God has been so good. But before I go to sharing what uh, what this ministry is, let us uh, have a word of prayer. So I invite you to bow your heads. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you and thank you for being such an amazing God, a faithful Father, and even a faithful best friend. Lord, I ask in a very special way that as uh, I begin to share tonight to my uh, fellow uh, intercessors here. Lord, I ask that may your leading and your guidance and most especially your Holy Spirit be upon us. May you speak, O Lord. May you hide me behind the shadow of your cross that I may not be seen nor be heard, but Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted. Thank you so much, Lord, because we know that even before we call, you have already answered and while we're yet speaking, you have heard us. This, Lord, we pray in the loving names of Jesus. Amen. So, so tonight, I'll be sharing not just how to lead out United Prayer, but somehow I'll be talking about the concept, why, why United Prayer? Why do we have to, uh, to do this? So, uh, I'll, just, I'll just read this, this beautiful quote. This is one of my favorite quotes in, in United Prayer. It says here, The promise is made on condition. You know what this promise is? This is the promise of the outpouring of God's Spirit. And friends, we know for a fact that without the power of the Holy Spirit, our work is is nothing. Would you agree to that? I know that you could not unmute yourself. You just lift up your fingers if you want to say amen. Let's do this. Amen? Yes. It's just even a few of us, there's interaction. It'd be amazing that little kid would lift up his finger later and <laughs> say amen. Okay, so listen to this beautiful quote. This is from Central Advance, from the Spirit of Prophecy, February 25, February 25, 1903, paragraph 2. It says, The promise is made on condition that the united prayers of God's people are offered. And in answer to these prayers, there may be expected a power greater than which comes in answer to private prayer. So you see here, friends, that private prayer is important. But what happens when God's people come together and pray? The power that could be expected is greater compared to praying individually. Can you say amen to that? One thing that we have missed out, friends, this this power here. And listen to this. This is my favorite line. The power given will be proportionate to the unity of the members and their love for God and their love for one another. Isn't this amazing? (laughs) So the power, the Holy Spirit's power that will be given to us will be proportionate to what? To the unity of the members and their love for God and their love for one another. Remember the story of Pentecost? This is is the reason why why we're doing United Prayer. When you look at Pentecost, friends, remember before Jesus, before Jesus died, and and even even on that last uh, on that last night in the last supper every disciple is somehow bickering wanting to take the first place there was no unity there's only one purpose that they have in their heart is somehow secure the the first place in God's kingdom and this is not a heavenly kingdom that they're thinking about they are thinking about the earthly kingdom so is because of that personal agenda that they had. They have their own personal mission, but they missed out on God's mission that was set for them. And because of this, this, there was no unity. But remember during that time, in that upper room experience, when 120 of them, you know the story, when they confess their sins to one another, when there's this perfect unity, when somehow no agenda was present, it was just the Holy Spirit's agenda what happened was tongues of fire the holy spirit came down and this is somehow what our church have missed 
we plan out on a lot of activities. We plan out on a lot of things. We always want methods. We always want procedures. But we miss out on the most important thing, the prerequisite of the outpouring of the Spirit. And, and this is one thing I realize, my dear friends, that if we will not humble ourselves before God, we will never have power. Remember 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. I guess all of you here in this call memorize that. If my people which are called by my name shall what? Shall humble themselves and pray. Have you noticed the first prerequisite was not to pray right away. The first thing was to humble. <laughs> because we could pray and we could be competing at the same time. Do you believe so? I have led out hundreds or maybe thousands of, of, of prayer sessions. And there are times that people in the prayer room are competing. Who's the, most, who's the most frequent to pray? Who's the loudest to pray? Who has the longest to pray? And friends, even in this manner of humbling, the enemy could still get in. Did you, did you notice but if we humble ourselves before God, the enemy could not. Isn't that amazing? This is one thing I realize, friends. We do not talk about the topic of humility. But the topic of humility is really important because humility, I believe, equals power. You believe so? Because when we humble ourselves, we do not depend on any of our powers or power around us. We depend on the power of the one who could give us the real power of all. So this is, this is the reason why, friends, that, that there's power when we come together if we do it the right way, if we humble ourselves before God. And this is not just, this is not just an activity for, for them to experience something powerful, something beautiful. Don't get me wrong. There's always wonderful and powerful and beautiful things that you'll experience in United Prayer when you do it the right way. And I believe, friends, that that is just the reward that the Holy Spirit gives us when we do it the right way. So our purpose here is not to give them an exciting feeling. You'll get that when you do it the right way. Our, our purpose here is not just to give them an emotional high. You will get the emotional high when you do it the right way. That will just be the byproduct that will just be the byproduct of, of coming together in the presence of the Lord. And sometimes people will say, oh man, United Prayer, that's, that's emotionalism. <laughs> I will tell you this, how can you not be emotional when the Holy Spirit breaks your heart? Do you believe so? Huh? How can you not cry out? How can you not be joyful when the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart? And this is one thing I realize, friends. This is... We are afraid of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because we have not experienced it. We have not seen it. Most of the time, we experience the lack of it or the absence of it, but not really the presence of what the Spirit can do. So here I'll give you, I'll give you something that, that really opened my eyes. How how submission to the Lord is very important. How, why united prayer, why uniting our hearts are really important, friends. If you have your Bibles with you, please open it with me. In, in Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. Verse 14 and 21 to 21. Okay. You see the story here? Now, huh, friends, you see the story here? Remember, before this, before this story, there was this uh, the Mount of Transfiguration story. Remember, Peter, James, and John went to Jesus up in the mountain. And when Jesus came down with the three, there was a commotion down below. What was happening? A father brought his son. <laughs> a father brought his son and he was, he was demon-possessed. And he was asking the nine remaining disciples, nine remaining disciples, how many? Nine. <laughs> nine. 
were they able to cast a demon out? No. Nine of them. Just imagine. Just imagine. Like Matthew, uh, Matthew was saying, in the name of Jesus, get out of this boy. Nothing happens. The demon mocked them. And then Matthew says, Thomas, try this. <laughs> one by one, they tried it. Nothing happened. And what was Jesus' answer? Because they asked Jesus, so how, how are these things? Because make long story short, I will not give you the, the details of everything. You know what happened. But when Jesus came, when this father pled before Jesus, and Jesus just said the right words, and then the demon flee. And then people were asking, and, and the disciples were asking, why could we not cast the demon out? And you know what Jesus said? This comes about by what? If you still remember, by prayer and fasting, isn't it? And I'm thinking, so prayer and fasting would have solved it. But I believe they prayed, friends. When you cast a demon out, you cannot not pray. Do you believe so? And the question next is, why do they need to fast? Why do they need to fast? Because not all the time you're doing fasting. And for me, friends, I was allergic to fasting before because I'm thinking, I love food. I love my meal. And I look like a malnourished kid. So if I fast, I don't know what's going to happen to me. And, and in the Bible, when you look at, when you look at, the command of Jesus here, there is a hidden reason why. Why Jesus wanted them to fast. And I'm thinking, because before when I when I read this or when I heard this uh, being preached in a sermon, I don't, I'm not actually satisfied. There's a reason behind why Jesus commanded them to fast. And friends, when I looked at the this beautiful story, in the Zara of Ages, praise God for the spirit of prophecy. Amen. When I looked at the Zara of Ages, page 431, I think uh, the title of this chapter is Ministry or something. It tells about here the behind the scene of what happened. Why Jesus asked them to fast. Listen, friends. The words of Christ pointing to his death has brought sadness and doubt. Remember, Christ told them, that he will die. And then listen to this. Listen to this next line. And the selection of the three disciples to accompany Jesus to the Mount, to the Mount of Transfiguration, has excited jealousy of the nine. Did you hear this? It excited jealousy of the nine. Listen to this. Instead of strengthening their faith by prayer and meditation in the words of Christ, they had been dwelling on their discouragement and personal grievances. In the state of darkness, they had undertaken the conflict with Satan. Friends, that is the reality. Why they need to fast and pray. Why they need to come before God and confess their sins and for their hearts to be cleansed. And all the while, friends, all the while I thought that the reason why we need to fast and pray because when you're fasting, you could twist the arm of God. <laughs> you believe so? Is that your belief before? And I and I observe like in the Philippines when there is like board exam, all, all the batch are fasting and prayer. Even the parents are fasting and prayer. Lord, please grant them a good grade. And when you are when you are courting someone, when you're making a decision. Lord, please give this woman to me. Give this man to me. Isn't that what we do? And we do not really realize that fasting and praying is emptying of self. It's afflicting of one's soul. It's really coming to the Lord. Lord, is there anything that comes between me and you? Please reveal it to my heart and give me. Give me the humility and the courage to lay it all at the foot of the cross. Can you say amen to that? That is the real essence of fasting. And, and listen to this, friends. The next 
the next paragraph it says in order to succeed in such a conflict they must come to the work in a different spirit did you see friends did you see here i want to get your attention the holy spirit could not be at work in the presence of this union in the presence of personal grievances if there is something that's separating us from one another friends it means to say that we are even separated from god we could not even stand <laughs> each other <laughs> how can we stand in the presence of god and this is the reason why my dear friends that we have to come together before the lord's presence with a humility of heart that his spirit may lead us remember without the spirit there'd be no power can you say amen to that this is the reason why we are doing united prayer it's not just for the experience of wow that was so powerful it really moved my heart don't get me wrong you will experience that i have experienced that so many times in so many prayer sessions when god's people humble themselves before him amen listen to this friends listen to this they must be strengthened their faith must be strengthened by fervent prayer and fasting and humiliation of heart now you see the manner of fasting and prayer that jesus is asking them to undergo did we get it amen you see here fervent prayer and fasting and humiliation of heart why do they need to humble themselves because of those ugly things that they have entertained in their hearts that they have retained in their hearts it's because of those things they were powerless the the power left them the spirit left them and they <laughs> and friends that is the reason why that the demon was laughing at them that was the reason why that their ministry there was powerless and friends if you could go back remember our our book a while ago was Matthew 17 just go back seven chapters before that let's go to Matthew 10 verse 8 Matthew 10 verse 8 You're there? Say amen. If you're not there, say have mercy. Okay. Listen to this friends. Jesus commissioned this disciples. In 10 verse 8 he says, "Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers." Friends, look at this. These are impossible things that Jesus is asking them to do. Has ordained them to do. Heal the sick. <laughs> cleanse the lepers who can cleanse the lepers no one <laughs> lepers are just left to die if they're not die they survive then then they come back and listen raise the dead who <laughs> and what cast out devils i'll stop there did jesus commission them or did jesus gave them the power to cast out devils yes or no yes or no yes It's written in red it's Jesus words giving them the commission ordain them that they have the power to cast out devils and seven chapters later all nine of them could not cast out one demon away from that kid why it's because they were bickering it's because they entertained jealousy it's because there they entertained the enemy in their hearts the question friends tonight don't you think that we are like the nine as well huh do you think that we are like the nine that we need a lot of cleansing that we need a lot of humiliation of heart that before we could go on and follow god's commission to us and follow god's mission to us don't you think that we need to come together and pray to confess our sins before him this is the reason why united prayer is important this is the reason why we come before god not just to experience a wonderful emotion we have to come before god because we have to humble ourselves corporately before him that any animosity that is between us between the churches should be taken out 
Friends, come to think of it. Is our church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the warmest church that you could come and visit in our day and age? Let's be honest. It is not. It is not. There are a lot of Seventh-day Adventist churches that I visited that I was just like heartbroken. And there are there are a lot of evangelical churches or or was this other Christian churches that are more welcoming to their visitors than our church. Hmm. And we're wondering why. It's the absence of the spirit, friends. Would you believe that there's a lot of bickering happening in the church? So, no matter how many programs we push, no matter who is the speaker, even if it's Mark Finley every week without the Spirit, it would do nothing. It would do no good. We have to have, we have to do our job. And our job is to humble ourselves before God. Then He could give us the Spirit. And whoever it is that's going to be speaking, the Lord will empower that person because it's not by might nor by that person's power, but by His Spirit. Amen? Remember, who was their speaker during Pentecost? <laughs> Peter. Peter who blatantly, who cursed in front of people that he does not know Jesus. With a lot of cursing, huh? And if this is a movie, it will be blip. <laughs> It is crazy. That guy who somehow turned away from his Savior is the main speaker. So do you think that it was because of, of Peter that won 3,000 during that day to the foot of the cross? It's not. And how can, how can we not grasp that until now? That we depend so much on men. That we depend so much on the speakers. That we depend so much on the celebrity speakers. Or the programming. Or the people who are involved. But we do not depend on the real power that God has promised. Not by might nor by power. Zechariah 4 verse 6. Only by my spirit. Can you say amen to that? Amen? Listen, friends, I would like to end that quote. It says, Earnest, persevering supplication to God in faith. Faith that leads the entire dependence upon God. An unreserved consecration to His work can alone avail to bring men to the Holy Spirit's aid in the battle against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in high places. This is the reason why we need to consecrate ourselves, especially us, prayer leaders, Leading out prayer is not just like leading a song service. Leading a prayer group needs a heart consecration. Needs our heart to be in tune with God. And friends, I don't know if you heard about GYC. I know Sharon has heard about GYC. Uh, Billy and Ati, Gary, have you heard about GYC? It's like a convention of young adults and young people all over the world. Like, yeah, every year, Bill. Every year they go from place to place, and uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of powerful speakers and and people from all over the world, like fifty plus countries represented every year, come together. and And I was asked to to somehow lead out the prayer session. And you know what, Ate? How many people show up at five forty five in the morning? More than a thousand people comes and pray and people are asking me Jem how are you able to lead out 1,000 plus people and I said if it's left to me I'll ruin the whole thing you know what the Lord does I set my alarm to wake up at to wake up 3 a.m. yes friends because I've learned my lesson before in order for us to lead out such a sacred task we have to have Lots of time of heart preparation. A day before or weeks before and during that day. And you know what time the Lord wakes me up? <laughs> he wakes me up at 12.56, 11.45, and I could not sleep all through the night. <laughs> Do I want to wake up? Of course no. <laughs> Do I need to get up? Yes, because the Lord wakes you up. And one thing, Ate, uh, Bill, that I that I realized, twin, I realized that 
why the Lord has to wake me up so early is because there's a lot of self that needs to be taken out. There's a lot of self that needs to be emptied. And as prayer leaders, we need to come before God. Lord, please bring to my attention anything that will defile this ministry. Anything that will defile this work. Because when, when everything is clear, the Lord could take over. And it's not going to be Jem leading out. It's not going to be Sharon leading out. It's not going to be anyone. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit leads out, game over for the enemy. <laughs> Can you say amen to that? Friends, this is one of the most unpopular ministry. You'll face rejection. Rejection among your peers. Rejection from the leaders. You, this is not one of those ministries that people are excited to come. <laughs> Sometimes it's just going to be you and And a few old people showing up. Sometimes it's just gonna be you, another person, or sometimes it's just gonna be you alone. And I've experienced that, my dear friends. But this is one thing that I'd like to tell you: if you are just alone, it means to say that that God wants to spend more time with you. And if just just two of you, friends, remember: for where two or three are gathered, God is in the midst. Amen. So do not be sad. And there is a beautiful quote here because I'm just preparing you for the worst, friends. <laughs> I'm just preparing you for the worst so that you will not be shocked. But I tell you, no matter how unpopular it is in the sight of men, it is the most popular ministry in heaven. This is one thing I'd like to assure you because listen to this. I have proof. This is not just an assumption. I have proof, friends. Listen. Exhort the brethren to pray. We must seek if we would find. We must ask if we would receive. We must knock if we would have the door open unto us. I like this next line. If there are only a few assembled, there are enough to claim the precious promises of God. Can you say amen? If there are only a few assembled, there are enough to claim the promises of God. Listen, friends. Why? Because the Father, the Son, and the holy angels will be present with you to behold your faith, your steadfast principle, and there you will have the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. <laughs> so do you think you're few? <laughs> Friends, just imagine that all the while I thought it will stop there. It will stop there. The Father, the Son, and His holy angels will be among you. But it went on. And even the Holy Spirit, the Trinity will be present when there's few people, even when there's few people come together and pray. And you know what it says as well? In one of the encouraging quotes from the Spirit of Prophecy, it says there, it says there that the most interesting meetings of all meetings Guess what it is. You could unmute yourself. Just guess. What Prayer. is prayer meeting? Amen. Amen. These are fast learners here. <laughs> it is the prayer meeting and if it's done the right way, I tell you friends, it is it is the most interesting. Why do you think thousand plus people run from their hotels at 5:30 in the morning? not to miss out on the songs that were sang for united prayer and we're not singing we don't have praise team guys we don't have we don't have piano we don't have guitar we don't have drums we don't have tambourines or cymbals all we have is our crackling voices <laughs> and we don't sing we don't sing like choruses we sing hymns all boring hymns <laughs> And why are young people running towards the prayer room? They don't want to miss out the singing. You know why? Because it's not about the instruments. It's not about it's not even about the singer. <laughs> it's about the heart. When the heart is ready to worship, then the angel joins in and the worship becomes true worship. 
Yeah, people, young people are asking me, Kuya Jem, Brother Jem, why is it different when we sing in the United Prayer session compared to when we sing in the church? One thing I observe, friends, when we sing in the church, there's a lot of distraction, isn't it? You look around, oh, look at that lady. She wore again that very revealing privilege. <laughs> look at that man. She could not even take care of his wife. The wife is carrying all those kids. And for the young people, <gasps> my crush is here. <laughs> I hope my makeup is okay. <laughs> There's just a lot of distraction. Our hearts are not really prepared to worship when we are in church. But when we go to come in prayer, at early morning, you only have one intention, and that is to be in the presence of God. So when the heart is right, when the heart is set to worship, my dear friends, then God shows up. And when God shows up, that's when the worship becomes to be the sweetest experience you'll ever experience. So friends, this is one thing as prayer leaders that we have to set up. We have to let everybody know that we are coming before the presence of God. And for us to invite them to do so, we have to come before God's presence first. We could not invite them to come in the Lord's presence when we ourselves don't know what it looks like. So the heart preparation is very important. Do we agree on that? Amen? So friends, I think that is the basic thing that I'd like to, to share with you. And uh, a few more quotes, friends, a few more quotes before, before I, I give you the tips. The tips, the tips, actually the instructions are, are very simple. Sharon knows about this. And some of you has experienced United Prayer. I believe so. Is it? Am I, am I right, Twin? Some of them have experienced United Prayer. But if we do not know about the real reason or the principle behind it, then we will not experience the true experience of worship. Listen, friends. The reason that, that more power does not attend the proclamation of the truth for this time is that there is too much reliance placed upon the ability of men. Too much trust in the talent and tact of workers and not enough reliance upon the arm of infinite power. This is one of the biggest reasons why we have to come together and do united prayer. To acknowledge that it's not man. It's not you. It's not me that's going to make this work. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit. It says here, The gospel of truth is not preached in demonstration of the Spirit, in the power of God. Self is ready to take credit. If any measure of success attends the work, self is flattered, self is exalted, and the impression is not made upon the minds that God is in all and all. Friends, this is, this is our main objective, why we bring people to the foot of Christ why we want them to experience this, to let them know that God is in all and all, that without God, we are nothing. It's that admission, it's that declaration. If we do not, if we do not pass that on, then we're going nowhere. If still man is the one taking the reins, then my dear friends, we'll be here in this earth until we die. <laughs> There's not gonna be there's not gonna be a revival that the Lord has promised. We're not gonna experience that. Yes, some people may experience it, but we will miss out on it. Friends, one last thing. This is very, very encouraging for me. And I want you to be encouraged as well. Signs of the Times, February 10, 1890. Friends, by the way, I will give this to Sharon, the quotes that I just read to you. So you'll not miss out on this. It says here, we may have Pentecostal seasons even now. Isn't that crazy? Can you say wow? With the biggest wow. <laughs> Don't you want Pentecost to happen in your time? And friends, get this. The Pentecost that is the revival that God has promised us for our time is way greater than the Pentecost that happened before. 
Isn't that crazy? Listen, we may have Pentecostal seasons even now if the people will pray fervently and believe in the promises of God. Wow. It did not say if God's people would create more programs, if God's people would just pick the right speaker, if God's people would raise more funds. Friends, we'll break, we'll bend over backwards and even break our spine. We will not accomplish anything if we will not spend time in fervent prayer. And it's the only time that when we submit ourselves to God, when we humble ourselves to God, that we will take Him at His word. And it says here, And when the prayer and faith abound among God's people, the world will see a steady light shining from them. Wow. Is that encouraging, friends? People, people will see a steady light shining from you, Ate. <laughs> from you, Bill. From you, Sharon. From me. The world will see a steady light. The reason why men are not coming into our churches right now because they have not seen the light of Jesus yet. We have to soak ourselves in the presence of God. That when man sees us, they will not see you, but they will see him. If Christ be lifted up, it will draw all men to me. And how do we lift him up? By bowing down low. When we go low, my dear friends, when we bow before the Lord's presence, as low as possible, then Christ is lifted up. This is the reason why we do united prayer. Corporate humility. Humility. 